The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time Wednesday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and the opening bell. And we have markets in red territory to kick things off. Quite the acceleration yesterday, intraday, almost right when I got off the air, right? Markets were in negative price. We were trading under 43.70. Zooming in on the chart right now, these are five minute bars on the S&P. We make a low last uh, yesterday morning. Literally within the 9.55 a.m. bar, so basically right when I got off the air 23 hours ago, you had the market at 43.66. I made note earlier in the program yesterday just talking about the wild swings. You know, you're talking about 70 points down on Thursday, almost another 70 points down on Friday. You get an acceleration back to those highs. We get over those highs intraday yesterday. Remarkable. You made a run of about 50 points, 50, 60 points almost to 44.20. And then just like that, man, we were we were within 10 points of the lows of yesterday this morning with the S&Ps down by 20 points. NASDAQ 100, we're off by about six tenths percent, trading off 100 points on the dot at 15,141. You have the Dow right now off by 79 points, 34,066. That's about, excuse me, two tenths percent in the red and the Russell, particularly volatile in both both directions recently having a little coffee this morning um negative by eight tenths percent this morning at 1764 you got the crude, con crude contract back above 88 dollars briefly this morning 88.57 and just like that we sell off about two dollars in the last what three three and a half hours since about 5 30 a.m this morning you see the volatility right now 86.57 still up by a dollar 12 in the session for crude how about gold it's not stopping man 1963 we just hit I mean, look at this thing early monday we're at 1920 lows of yesterday you're pushing about 1931 we're up by 25 dollars or 1.32 percent you put gold on a daily chart I mean, you talk about some volatility right over a period of a month gold just traded down 130 dollars and got it all back just like that, as we're testing those highs, recent highs, I should say, on the gold contract. But you can see above that, we're pushing price levels of about 1973. Next stop after that is 2000, and maybe you're pushing those 2085 highs. We jump over to the dollar index this morning, DXY. Back to a short term time frame. Yesterday, some severe volatility. Today, we're getting a little bit of a bounce, pushing 106.32 right now, up by about eight pennies on the dollar index, and we jump to notes and bonds. And it just keeps going, right? It just keeps going. The 10 year, and you know, the channels don't always work out. They did on this occasion, folks. We were talking about how it was bumping up against that channel line. When? Six days ago. What is that? Friday in particular? Yeah, Friday in Yes, Friday. No, excuse me, Thursday. Yeah, Thursday in particular. We'll back this up on a five minute, five day chart. There's your acceleration Thursday on that CPI print early in the morning yesterday, Thursday. Actually spiked that just prior to 8.30 in the morning. You hit 108.16. And just like that, we're at 106.02 on the 10-year right now. We jump over to the two-year, basically flat. But boy, it was quite a day yesterday. We make new cycle lows in price, highs in yield in the two-year yesterday. And we're right at that level, man. 101.01, 101.01. One. There we go. Uh, you put it in a daily, you see, breaking all the recent lows on the two-year as higher rates in play right now on a hot retail sales number, putting that in play yesterday in the market. All right, we jump around to some of the action this morning. Morgan Stanley out with their numbers. We jump over to Morgan Stanley. They got quite an acceleration yesterday on the heels of a positive market, on the heels of Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, without their, with their numbers out. Morgan Stanley out this morning. Trading lower, but trading lower with the market. You are off, what, $2 right now. It's at 2.5% about in the red. Profit slides on investment bank slowdown. 
Wealth management asset flow slumped in the third quarter. The CFO, though, they're talking about the future, and everything's pointing to a deal-making rebound. We'll see if that plays out, right? Uh, revenue from the fixed income trading business slumped 11%. I mean, that shouldn't be the case. Who was crushing it on fixed income? Somebody was. I mean, we've had some real moves, man, to have fixed income slumping. Uh, muted fees, fees from deal making caused a drop in net income. Revenue of $6.4 billion from the firm's wealth management business missed the estimates. And net new assets slumped to $35.7 billion from $89.5 billion in the prior quarter. Net new assets, almost $36 billion. Still not a bad number, right? Solid performance in a mixed environment is what they're talking about. And they're seeing a backlog continuing to grow on mergers, mergers and acquisitions. Might make sense, right? Tough time to push that out potentially right now. Nonetheless, they're a little bit lower this morning, off by about 3%, 2.5% right now to $78. Yeah, speaking of, right, pushing, pushing things out. So Instacart. Stay away from this one, man. All right, you jump over to the Analyze tab on the Thinkorswim platform, you jump down, you're talking about a $7 billion company. I believe this was valued as high as $40 billion during the pandemic. They pushed it out to the public at what, like $10 billion or something like that? And check out the daily. Do you see any strength in there, folks? I don't see any strength in there. They pushed it out, opened it about 33, accelerated to 43, and I just see lower lows and lower highs, and you got to be careful, man. I was talking about it myself. There is a vast difference right now. And listen, everybody's spending money on things that would qualify as the gig economy, right? You're paying for Uber, you're paying for Lyft, you're paying for Instacart, um, whatever all those services are that are now available for workers who want to be in a gig economy. But there's something like Uber, which is a necessity, okay? You need a car. You need to take an Uber versus the luxury gig economy of saving a few minutes instead of ordering uh, Uber was the other one I was thinking of there, right, in terms of Uber Eats. That's a luxury. And the luxury ones are in a tough spot right now. Instacart is a luxury for a lot of people. For some people, it's a necessity, right? You got a family man, you got two parents working, you got one parent working. They can't make the trip to the grocery store. It's worth it to pay that premium. It's almost like a babysitter premium, right? If you have children, I can I can empathize. Okay, that's where that, that's where my head goes. But many times it's a time saver. You're paying for that time, okay? And when you're paying for the time, that's a luxury. And right now, it's a tough spot to be in because prices are so high on many things, food especially. It's a difficult task, man, for Instacart. I told you, I was using this thing every single week during the pandemic for a period of a long time. And I'm buying at least $300 of groceries a week, family of five at home, nothing too crazy, okay? Just the normal stuff, groceries, 300 bucks. And what happens? I finally just hit a tipping point. Um, the pandemic was its own animal, okay? Tommy was born. He got out of the newborn stage, right? You know, we had all these things going on in particular in my life that made it worth it to pay for that premium. Inflation was not roaring just yet. I don't use Instacart anymore. Just stopped overnight. And think about the amount of money. I was a person pushing 14 grand to 15 grand revenue for them. That's just 300 bucks a week, right? So it's crazy how that can drop off, man. And uh, that's a luxury. It really adds up, so be careful on those equities, Instacart in particular. We jump around, we'll come back, we'll take a look at some of the other equities out with their numbers. We'll take a look at that gold contract. Stay tuned, folks, we'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&P futures negative by about 20 points right now, trading at 43.81. You take a look at the VIX this morning. A little bit of negative action. The VIX slightly elevated to a price level of 18.40. You see the spike last Friday up to almost 21. To talk about some of the action this morning, let's jump over to our man Kevin Hicks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, right here on Tiger TV, the Schwab Network, with Fast Market, your host, Kevin Hicks. Kevin Hicks, Tom White, the team at the Schwab Network. They walk you through the day's action. We're coming into earnings season. And Kevin Hinks, I'm going to ask you again, man. We're back on to yields. When are we going to hit 5% in this 10-year? Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, you know, even with everything going on with geopolitics, the, the bonds and notes cannot rally today. That's probably not a good sign as we hit 487 on the 10-year. Uh, but here's the problem, Tommy. We're dealing with geopolitical risks, right? But we're also dealing with a pretty strong U.S. economy that we're trying to deal with. So yesterday's retail sales number was a shockingly strong number. But if you think about it, from a, if you take a, a step back and look at it, think about all the labor negotiations going on right now. Think of all the wages getting pushed higher. That wages is going to lead to discretionary income. Discretionary income is going to keep retail sales elevated, Tommy. So not really the hardest path to connect the dots from labor negotiations to higher wages, higher wages to discretionary spending, discretionary spending to retail sales, Tommy. So, yeah, uh, but strong data out of the U.S. is going to keep yields under pressure, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, um, you have to love the fundamentals of the economy when they're strong. Uh, I wonder how Chairman Powell is receiving all that data as it comes in with some hot retail sales. But the market, man, I have it up there on the Thinkorswim platform. Quite the acceleration yesterday, right at about 10 o'clock when I got off the air from my show, Kevin, 10 Eastern time, about 43.66, and you drive up to 44.25. We come within almost 10 points of that low yesterday, Kevin, already this morning. I wanted to actually ask you, I touched on the VIX 
right before I was talking to you, we got a spike to 21 almost last Friday. We're sitting at 1840 right now. We've had some real pullbacks, man. Just even looking at the last five days or so from that Thursday acceleration on the CPI print, 44.30, down almost 70 points. Friday, you got the acceleration as well. What do you think of the VIX at 18? I mean, even on the Thinkorswim platform, I got a five-minute chart up here going back about five days. You take Thursday, you had 70 points negative. You take Friday, you had almost 70 points negative again. And then from where we were last uh, yesterday afternoon, you're talking about 40 points almost. What do you think of the volatility priced into this market when we're getting some big swings, man, in both directions right now? Well, if you look at the VIX for the last 10 days, it is elevated, right? It was down to as low as 1540 uh, at the end of last week. It's up around 18 now, so it has gone higher. It's not as high as it was overnight when it hit 20.7, Tommy. You're right. But the VIX is still elevated, but you're right. It feels like, because of maybe the last few years, it feels low for, for what's going on in the world right now. And, you know, escalations and events that are going on uh, between Israel and Gaza – I don't think there's any end to those soon. I don't think there's any type of de-escalation. I think we have to be, I think we're naive to think that, you know, VIX was going to just go up and then just come straight back down. I think there's going to be headlines and events that move the markets. So, Tommy, we, you, you just got to brace yourself for a very headline-driven market. On the, in the backdrop, though, we have earnings, and the earnings – so far, in, in terms of financials and airlines, not great, mainly because, but United Airlines had some good numbers, but they guided lower, right? M M Morgan Stanley missed on some of their, you know, their some of their numbers were lower from last year, but they said, because Morgan Stanley, you can pretty much put in the same category as Goldman Sachs, mergers and acquisitions, IPOs, raising debt, those all favor Morgan Stanley. So they see some tailwinds behind them. But Tommy, this is a market right now dealing with a little bit of risk off. Not as much as you would think, though, other than gold, which is solidly strong here to start the day. The rest kind of muted in terms of risk off. Tommy? I appreciate the take, man. And yeah, we saw those headlines in terms of geopolitical, right, with the, the hospital. I mean, the, the headlines are still coming. And I agree, that's just going to be um, probably what we deal with for some time. Not sure how that de-escalates. But as you said, man, we got earnings on the plate. We got a couple headlines coming up later in the week. Do you guys have some equities you're talking about on, and, excuse me, on Fast Market today at 12, Kevin? Big day for earnings today, Tommy, as we get Netflix and Tesla today after the bell. And we also get Lamb Research. So that'll keep us plenty busy today, Tommy, with those three big names. How about, can you give us a little teaser on Tesla? Everybody likes talking about Tesla, man. We all know uh, one of the stories may be, right, the earnings. They got a lot of price cuts. Man, you talk about price cuts. Tesla holding up relatively well recently. You're sitting at 250. Give us a little teaser, if you don't mind, Kevin, on your take on Tesla shares coming into their earnings. Yeah. Uh, how much has, what's the trade off? But based on Elon Musk lowering prices, to overall sales and profitability. We're, we're pretty sure the margins are going to come down, right, as he's lowered prices pretty significantly. But what did that do for sales? And what else? And here's always the thing you got to be ready for with Elon Musk and Tesla. What's in the pipeline? What's the cyber truck? What's an update on the cyber truck? What's an update on the robo-taxi? What's an update on, ro on, on, on robotics in general in terms of manufacturing so there's so many things that elon musk can talk about you've got a nice trend here of higher lows and higher highs coming in tesla so and if you if, if you're into uh, technical analysis which i'm only moderately into um you're getting a pretty big wedge formation forming in tesla which means something's got to give here tommy so could be an interesting couple days here in tesla I was drawing a few technicals, man. I see that channel line. Um, yeah, quite a start to the year at around 100, right? And we're trading at 254. Uh, always something exciting when you got Elon out there, I'm sure, as he's talking up the future of Tesla. Kevin, I appreciate the time, as always, man, on a busy morning. We'll be watching Fast Market at 12 today on the Schwab Network right here on Tiger TV. And we look forward to talking to you tomorrow, man. Have a great day, Tommy. You too. Folks, check it out. 12 o'clock today. And yeah, we got a couple main event stocks, man. Tesla shares.
And yeah, pretty interesting, right? You look at the downtrend channel they had for Tesla coming off the highs of 414.50 back in November of 2021. And boy, you could make the case, man, that that breaks out of that channel line in July up to 300. You come back and you test that channel line. Now, that channel line seems a little bit high maybe from where the natural fit might be from the highs that we had back there in terms of not being a, uh, an exact test. But taking off those channel lines, all right, as Kevin was talking about it, man, enough time has passed. We're in a new channel right now. And, and boy, looking at that one, I mean, Tesla might be a buy here, man. Look at that channel line. As you're coming right down to the bottom part of that channel line, coming into their numbers, you jump over to the Analyze tab, you jump over to the Earnings tab or the Fundamentals, you're looking for about a $12 move. Not 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 astronomical when you get the type of moves you get in Tesla, right? $12 move. What are you talking about? Only a 4.5% move in either direction for Tesla shares. You want action through Friday in terms of the options expiring on Friday instead of just the one-day expected move on the event that's happening. You're looking at about a $14 move in either direction. So if you're going bullish, right, what's that mean? Well, it means you got to get up to 267 268 just to make your money back. If you're going volatility, that means you're paying about $7 in either side. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the open. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We get the markets open. You're looking at S&P down by about 18 points to kick off the trading session. NASDAQ 100, we're off by 100. NASDAQ 100, off by 100. Trading at 15,140. You get the Dow barely in the red, only off 33 points right now. That's one tenth percent. You get the Russell off a full percent. Continuing the volatility, Russell off 19 bucks. Jumping over to Tesla. So taking a real quick peek. So Tesla, jump over to the Analyze tab. Their earnings after the bell tonight, okay, they're priced in about a $12 move. Options are pricing in. Now, what's great is the market just opened, so all the option pricing is, is resetting itself for the open this morning, okay? All of the option pricing, when you go into it overnight, it's just predicated on the close of the previous day. Those are not live bid-ass spreads that exist in the options market. The options market only trades essentially, okay, and there are when things are... The, it, it, Occasionally, certain options do trade outside of 9.30 till 4. I know some of the zero days to expiration, some of the index options in particular, you got till 4.15, you, you got till 5 o'clock to exercise them. There's, there's some rules that go around there. But essentially, options trade when the market's open 9.30 in the morning till 4 o'clock at night. Those options um, end that pricing, and that's how it stays. So the market's open. Now we get new pricing, okay? So taking a look at Tesla, you got about a $12 move priced in for their earnings, and you have about a $14 move priced in to hold the options that expire on Friday. Three full trading days from this morning, two full trading days after the earnings event. Okay, so you can see the earnings event's pricing in almost 13 bucks now as the option pricing resets itself for the open, and you're looking at about $15 of implied volatility in either direction for the weekly options, which expire on Friday. So $13 of the volatility is priced in for the event tonight, which is probably gonna get sucked out of that volatility premium once those options go through that event, as in once we get through the earnings event, you're gonna see this volatility get sucked out, you'll have two days left to go, and you'll still have a couple dollars of premium in there for implied volatility to go through Thursday and Friday trading. It's probably gonna be a little bit higher than $2, I'm guessing, but nothing too crazy because look at the options that expire a whole extra week out. You're only paying $5 extra implied volatility for going a whole week out. Meanwhile, you're paying $13 of implied volatility to go out just for tonight's action for earnings. Now, if you want to look at a trade, right, potentially, let's do an example trade. That's what they're going to line up on Fast Market with our man Kevin Hinks. They do three example trades a show usually, folks. Check it out if you want to learn about options, okay? Let's do an example trade because this one looks nice, man. doesn't mean it's going to happen. Um... And I like using defined risk, especially for an equity like Tesla, that boy, you know, give or take, man, this thing could move $50 overnight in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat, okay? They're dealing with some substantial woes in terms of pricing, eating at their margins. I mean, the pricing drops. We've been covering them on this program every time they announce them, right? Even my friends and I talk about them in our group chat, though. Man, you bought a Tesla anytime final quarter of 2022, you got taken to the cleaners by Tesla because you could buy the same car this year for probably 20 to 30% less, right? You're probably not even getting what you'd, I mean, imagine selling your used car, you got to take a 30, $40,000 haircut immediately. So that's going to eat into their margins when they drop them that dramatically. But I don't know, man. These technicals are in an uptrend channel. We're bouncing up against the bottom line. And who knows what Elon's got coming down the pipeline to talk up his future game. So let's take a look at an example trade. All right. We're looking at the options that expire Friday here, October 20th. OK. And we're trading right now at 254. The calls are on the left here. The puts are on the right. We're going to take a look at just a simple call spread above the market, folks. Okay, you got about $15 of movement priced in through the close of Friday. So we're going to look for about a $15 move in a bullish direction. Okay, so we're paying for volatility here and we are directionally bullish. Okay, so we are going to buy the call. And this is where we'll, we'll take a look at how this goes. But we're going to look at buying the call at 255. And here, I'm even going to clear this and just show you. When you're buying a call, okay, you're clicking on the ask to load the offer. This is in the Thinkorswim platform. And then what's cool is you can just hold the control key and build a multi-leg option. And then I'm going to sell the 270. So I'm going to click on the ask while holding the control key. It loads it up. It's got a vertical spread, okay? 
it's a vertical debit spread. And the cool part about this right now, okay, is that it's pretty simple math, pretty simple risk reward, how this lines up, okay? These are the types of trades with defined risk that are pretty cool. And the best part about this is you can do it both ways, okay? So you can be the person making this simple trade, which is to say, I'm bullish. I think that the volatility priced into this equity is is affordable, it's underpriced, maybe I'm willing to pay that, right? It's, it's gonna be more volatile than the market is potentially pricing in, and I think it's gonna be directionally bullish, and the market is usually just pricing equal risk for bullish and bearish around earnings, rightfully so. So you're paying $5, okay, you're paying $4.99. Let's just tick it to five and hold it there, all right? Now I'm gonna jump over here and I'm gonna analyze that trade. You jump it over to the Analyze tab, and what I love here is you jump over to the Risk Profile tab, and here it is, simple, in a visual display, keep your eye on the blue line here, okay? The red line, excuse me, the purple line is live as of today, your profit loss and how it swings. But let's say you hold this option until expiration, which is this Friday's close. You need to get to a price point of 260 to break even. Why is that so? Well, you're paying $5 for the right to buy this thing at 255. Well, it's trading at 255 right now, right? Well, here's the kicker, though, okay? You're doing that with defined risk, and you're capping how much it's going to cost you by then selling that right to somebody else at 270. So you essentially, what you're doing is you're paying the $5 of volatility premium to control the price range of 255 to 270. And the best part about the simple risk reward is you're risking $1 to make two. That's the simple math. Now, the problem here is, as if the stock just stays at 255, and it's jumping around as we're talking here, you lose all your money. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's the kicker and how that goes. Now, if you say, man, that's crazy, right? You're saying, why are you gonna make that trade? Because you're gonna lose $5 if the stock just stays where it's at. Well, you got an earnings event for Tesla, and that can drive some action, okay? So the odds that it just stays where it's at for three days of trading, not very high. But if you like the other side of that trade, and this is the best part of options, folks, okay? Because this is buying volatility, okay? And this is going to cost you money. Every single day that that trade is on, you're paying money for that volatility premium that you possess, okay? Now you say, I wanna be the one selling volatility, okay? Well, here's what the trade looks like. You are now the person that gets paid $5, you get a $5 credit, you're selling a credit call spread, okay, and you just reverse the trade. So now look what happens is, you're trading at 255 right now, I know we're jumping around, okay, you trade at 255, and what happens? Well, geez, you don't lose money all the way up to 260. Stock can trade up $5 until you lose a penny, and this is just going as of expiration, and then where are your losses capped? They're, la they're capped at 270. That's not a bad trade, or if, trade either if you're bearish or to neutral. Nonetheless, Tesla earnings after the bell. But when we come back, we'll talk some Forex. We're talking to our man Teddy Kegstad. Don't go away, folks. We'll be back in three minutes. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, 
or SPXS, Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P off by 23 points right now, pushing basically pre-market session lows. We're trading at 43.79, and we're going to jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Folks, you can read Teddy's newsletter, the Tiger Forex Report. He puts out new issues every Monday. You can check that out right under the newsletter tab on TFNN, the Tiger Forex Report. You can sign up for $97. Comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Teddy's got a couple of outstanding webinars as well, right under the services tab. You're talking some options, capitalizing on time with calendar stock option spreads. We were just talking some options prior. And then candlestick patterns, stock and option strategies. Check those out under the services tab. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Uh, boy, we got a lot to talk about, man. A lot's happened since we last talked to you. We didn't talk to you last week, right? So we got the whole Middle East war that's been happening. Um, where do you want to kick things off? Yields through the roof? Where, where do you want to start the conversation, Teddy? Yeah, I think that no matter what yields, you have to look at them as being very bullish still. Uh, I mean, it, it's kind of funny. I had a conversation with a, f a friend of mine who's been down at the Board of Trade for years um, years ago, and we were talking about yields in the bond market because typically when you have a situation like what's going on in the Middle East, especially like as strong of a situation as it is, you would see, think you would have flight to quality in the bonds, meaning you would be buying the bond market 10 year and the 30 year and even the short terms and stuff like that. And that's not happening. So where is flight to quality right now? Well, flight to quality is in the U.S. dollar, obviously, because yields are pushing higher. If money's not going into the bond market in a situation like this, that's where it's going to. So it's it's definitely pretty strong <clears throat> for the U.S. dollar, at least supporting it, at least like keeping it from pulling back, which the dollars do for a correction anyhow. So I think that you have to really look at it that yields right now because of this situation are showing how strong this trend is. And I would be very careful trying to fade the momentum of the yield curve right now, especially with another rate hike looming. Yeah, it's pretty remarkable. We're two weeks out today, right, from a Fed decision. We are two weeks out today. And no matter what happens potentially in this meeting, I think the conversation has, has shifted pretty dramatically over the last couple of weeks in terms of the odds of a hike. We saw the two-year spike in over 5.2%. We got the 10-year, 4.87, I think. I know you talk a lot about the 30-year in your Tiger Forex report as well, pushing 109.22, just over the highs of 106. Um, 
in terms of price action on the 30 year, Teddy, if you got people out there, where were you looking for potential? I know you got some breakout areas and downside in your newsletter I was checking out, but for the listeners mm -hmm. out there, could you give them a little take on, on the 30 year? I got the chart up here as we talk. Okay, yeah, so for, I'll pull it up real quick. Um, for the 30 year, I would say uh, very likely what's going to happen is you're going to see. Uh, probably, I mean, because we have one more rate hike that's looming, uh, you're going to probably see the trend continue for one. Now, as far as how much further it's going to go, I think we have every bit of a good four or five handles left to go in the bonds. So you're looking at this 110, 109 area. I think it's very rational that bef between now and the end of the year that we probably see the bonds down around the 105 to 106 handle area. So that's still a nice move now with the volatility we've had. It's not that hard to make a move like sure. that happen. Now, if we do get down to that area, will it hold? You mean, like, or is it going to bounce off of it? I think it's probably going to have a nice bounce when we do hit that area. But I would say that, yeah, most likely you're going to see those the yields really push to those levels. I mean, think about this. I went to the bank last week and I was looking at just at the counter when I was making a deposit. You know, you have CDs now for three months going off at f over 5%. That hasn't happened in over a decade, you know. I mean, like the fact that now it's actually you're, when you're. I was standing in line. I'm like, well, okay. So in, in this checking account, why do I have this cash now sitting idly like that now? You know, like for the past four years, especially. I mean, you're making like less than half of a percent. You're not moving your money into a CD and locking that up, and even why wasting your time? But now you're looking at a situation where. Uh, CDs actually are becoming something that while you're sitting on short-term cash or something like especially like real estate deals or what have you they're becoming a very viable option because of this you know so that's also competitive for banks and I think that's also going to support the yields because there's now a demand for being able to put your money away and getting interest <laughs> you know what there's there's a theory you know put your money in a bank and actually get paid for it you know so and I think that that's something that trend is going to maintain itself and once we push these levels like I think where we're at right now we're pushing resistance eventually this is going to become support so I think that you have to look at the bond the bond market and the tenure and the short run short terms that where we're trading right now probably is going to become the floor as we move forward over the next year like a year from now you will be looking at these levels and being like who remember when mortgages were only going off at like you know seven percent six percent whatever it would be wild but 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 it's pretty wild where we are right now in terms of um it just keeps marching on everybody seems like it's going to abate right and, and then we go three months forward and we're making new highs on yields and i love the conversation of cds because i agree one thing i keep pulling up during the program teddy is talking about even what a what a five-year ladder if you're like laddering a, a CD can get you right now because I find it so interesting and you're pushing 5.15 percent um, is it's ballparking around there. You know, if you're taking a one year, two year, three year, four year, five year, you're getting over 5 percent for a guaranteed, you know, FDIC insured bank CD on a five year basis and you get to reset it every 12 months. So, you know, if the scenario plays out like you're talking about, right. You're capitalizing that increase in yield. You know, you're not locking in a five year because what if, like you say, rates are going up dramatically? Um, and I find it so interesting. And then you compare it to the S and P, right? And we're sitting at 4,400. And if you do five percent over five years, you're pushing 5,600 in the S and P. Which, yeah, there's a very real chance. Okay, this market's over 5,600 in five years. I get that mm -hmm. too. But risk free. Telling a lot right. of people that I can give you the S and P right now at fifty six hundred in five years, and you don't risk a penny. That's a scenario that, in my mind, you know, in my adult life, that I haven't had to play out, which is pretty interesting. And it's it's real money when you're above that price level. So I agree. Uh, crude. We got to talk about crude, man. Okay. The Middle East in play, of course. Crude gets a little bit of a lift with with the action, but uh, nothing too substantial in terms of what's going on in the Middle East. We're trading at eighty seven bucks. What do you think of crude at these prices? Uh, I think they're they're definitely pretty much in a stable to uh, you know higher mode. I don't think you're going to see any real sell off in crude at all, um, as long as this uh, conflict between Hamas and Israel remains. And here's the thing: is as long as it's contained where it's at, I think that. Crude probably is not going to spike too high. I don't see it selling off, but I don't see it really spiking too high. If this spreads with Hamas anywhere else, 
then I think we're going to have a big problem. Um, then I think you could easily see oil shoot up to $120, $150 like in, in literally a few weeks, you know, yeah. because if it does spread outside of Israel and uh, Gaza Strip, I mean, you're looking at oil. It's not just oil production. But the the move, the mobility of oil that is produced, you know, and once that happens, you know, it doesn't matter how much oil you're drilling in the Middle East. If it can't go anywhere, what does that do to supply and the the cost of oil? You know, so I think that's something you really have to pay attention to. If if all of a sudden you start to see any other countries involved, oil, I think, is going to spike 20, 30 dollars very, very quickly. Because right now, you know, remember years ago, if any type of conflict, you would see oil jumping around all over the place. Now it absorbs it very quickly, you know, so as long as it's contained, I think we're setting a range where the floor is going to be around 80 bucks. Um, But if we like I said, if it spreads, I can see oil being at easily over 100 to 110 dollars very quickly. Can you hang with us during the break, Teddy? Sure. <clears throat> All right, we'll come back because we. I just want to talk about maybe some of the other currency pairs that we're looking at this sure. week with some action. We'll be right back, back, folks. We'll finish it up with Teddy. Stay tuned. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps off almost 25 points right now, trading at 43.77. The Dow, how about the Dow? A little bit of a sell-off. You're off by 150. You jump over to Morgan Stanley on their numbers, an acceleration to the downside, off by more than 6% right now. Goldman trading lower, off by 1.7% on those Morgan Stanley numbers. But we're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstad. We're talking some currencies. Um, We've seen the dollar jump around, Teddy. I wanted to jump to the euro if we could real quickly. Euro, U.S. dollar, I know you're saying everything can always differentiate. We're trading about 104.50. We've had a little bit of a chop even the last five, ten days or so on the euro. What do you think of the action in the euro, if I can ask? Uh, absolutely. Well, right now, I mean, obviously the trend for the dollar has been very strong. We're overdue for at least a minor correction. I mean, we haven't had really any significant uh, turn in the dollar except for, you know, a small two or three day move here or there. Yeah. And I think that right now, are we, could we have a nice correction? Yeah, I think we could get back to like the 107 area. As long as yields stay around where they're at, um, if they, now if they're pressing higher, then I can't really see that we're going to see much of a rally out of the Euro US dollar. Is it trying to? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, all of the currencies are pushing extremes right now. If you look at like the Aussie, the New Zealand, you know, so, uh, but what have they been doing? They've been going sideways. And I'll, remember, we do have this Fed meeting coming up in two weeks. So as, as long as I mean, if oil stays pretty much stable within a trading range of like ten dollars and if, if the bonds in the 10 year start to stabilize where they're at and trade, like, for instance, the bonds is around 109, 110 or 110 area. If it stays within a couple handles of that and doesn't really move and that starts to develop a range trade, then I think you could see a nice spike up where I think you could easily see the euro get back up to like one about a dollar oh seven fifty, you know, something like that. Um, can we get above a dollar? That's kind of a critical area. I don't think that's going to happen, <clears throat> especially if the uh, Fed, let's say the Fed raises rates at the next meeting. All of a sudden, consensus is like, oh, they're not going to raise again until next year. Well, slow down there. We don't know what the economic numbers are over the next, you know, couple of weeks, let alone the next couple of months, you know. Sure. So, and I think that that's going to be very restrictive on the euro, especially. I don't see it getting too much of a bounce as far as a correction, and I would definitely be a seller in that area. Well, Teddy, I appreciate it as always, man. We look forward to talking to you next week. Have a great one. We'll talk to you next Wednesday, man. Thanks, Tommy. Take care. Thanks so much. Folks, thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up next.